somehow we stumbled on this movie in Bruges. I'm not big on it, but uh, let's see. Roger Ebert says the actors are spectacular. Colin Farrell following a sharp turn in Woody Allen's dull-edged Cassandra's dream gives a performance of ferocity and feeling. Oh, that's Peter Travers at Rolling Stone. Uh, Roger Ebert, four stars. Ray Fiennes is in it. Brendan Gleeson, a pleasure to watch. His face is a roadmap to all of his characters' soul. Come on. That's, you're, I'm not watching yeah. a movie. If you said that was, <laughs> hey, read this. Do you want to watch this movie? His face, a roadmap to his character's soul. I could say the same about David Pollock, ESPN College Football Analyst, College Game Day. Oh, there's that face. It's a roadmap to your soul, David. <laughs> Have you seen the movie In Bruges? That is a hard no, Dan. Okay. I apologize. Would you watch it for us and give us a movie? You got a lot of downtime. You know, when you travel, I know you're watching film, David, right? Wink, wink. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's hey. all we do, right, Dan? We yeah. just sit in the room and watch tape and take notes. Yeah, and that's all we do. So when you call home and your wife's there with the kids and you're they're having spaghettios or something, you're like, oh man, I'm 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 chopping up this uh, this pit defense here, honey. I don't even have time to go get something to eat. I'm eating out of a vending machine here. All right, yeah. Favorite movie of all time for David Pollock is oh. Of all time, I'll go Rounders. I think Fritzy, that's high on Fritzy's list. Now, I do love Rounders, but I hate Rounders because John Malkovich saying uh, KGB, pay the man his money. He beats me. <laughs> hey, that man is my name. <laughs> you do the accent better than John Malkovich does, and he's a great <laughs> actor. Pay the man his money. Like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that's de- but that's definitely a great movie. I think I'd put Shawshank Redemption up there. I put Gladiator up there. I, I mean, I, obviously, those movies never never get old. But uh, what about you? What's yours, Dan? I don't have one. Okay, well, give me a top five or like a couple then. I don't have one. I I, oh, I, I seriously don't. I, if there's a born if there's a born movie on, I will watch that. Except for when Jeremy Renner was born, I won't watch that. But I don't care where it is in the movie. I'll watch a born movie. Hoosiers, okay. Hoosiers solid. comes on. I'm watch. Do you have a problem with Rudy like Joe Montana does? Joe Montana said, you know, we kind of made fun of Rudy, and it's you know it. He wasn't – the story isn't told the way it really happened. Well, I, Joe's obviously got a better perspective, too, being there at, at Notre Dame and obviously, you know, being closer to the program. But I grew up watching that movie, and obviously the the spirit behind it and the uh, the uh just the everybody being able to relate to a guy giving their all and stuff. So I, I absolutely love the movie as a kid. I don't watch it as much now, but, like, if you're talking football movie, you got to go remember the Titans are blindside. Like, I think those are the two for me that – I would watch if they're on all the time. But when you're watching, like, uh, Keanu Reeves as a quarterback in uh, The Replacements, are, are you grading <laughs> him as a former defensive player who wanted to take Keanu Reeves' head off? <laughs> no. Uh, typically, Keanu Reeves' acting isn't really my forte anyways. But um, I think he was he was okay. What was he, Falco? What, what was yeah. his name in that one? Yes. Yeah, he was, fi- he was fine. No, I don't. I don't look at it. It has to be the most accurate thing in the world. It's a flipping movie, for goodness sakes. Oh, okay. Uh, that's all I wanted to talk to you about. But I guess while I have you, I should talk to you about right. game day is in Columbus. It's Notre Dame and the Ohio State. Coverage starts at 9 a.m. on the Mothership and ESPNU. How does Ohio State not win this game? Um, if their defense shows us that they that they're what they are who they were last year. I mean, if you watch the Rose Bowl, Utah scored – and did what they wanted at will. You watch Michigan, Michigan pounded them in the face and ran the football and was more physical than them. Oregon early in the season. So, you know, Ohio State brought in a new defensive coordinator to solve their problems. Does he solve their problems? I have no doubts about their offense. This Dan, this might be the greatest offense in the history of college football. It's going to be on the list with Joe Burrow and company with, with LSU in 2019. They just got so many playmakers and ways to kill you. But last year, what cost them being in the playoffs and a chance at a natty was their defense. And 
just bringing in a new DC doesn't necessarily fix that. So to me, that would be Notre Dame's chances to play physical and what they, that's what they like to do best anyways. Do you think that Joe Burrow, LSU Tiger offense, best offense you've ever seen? That, uh, Kyler Murray in 2018 was, was pretty stupid. Shoot, Mac Jones was pretty impressive. Um, yeah, I, I would go with that just because I think that they, they could run the football, they could throw. But you think about it now, and we, we look back, revisionist history, obviously. Justin Jefferson guy is pretty good in the NFL. He's, he's okay. Jamar Chase, that guy, he's pretty good. Like, you, you look back at a one-two punch at wide receiver. I mean, my goodness, it's, I don't know if it's going to get, you know, much better than that. So, I, I would go – and then Joe Burrow, obviously, just – I mean, that dude, you saw what he did in one year with the Bengals. He was just so good at physical, tough, but could run and scramble and make plays. Did he um, have the greatest Murray, season? Yes. Is that the greatest season a college quarterback has ever had? Joe Burrow. Yes, and and the greatest transformation I've ever seen from one year to the next. I mean, this is a guy that I'm like, he's a decent player. You know, you know he cute little story, transfer from Ohio State, going to LSU, and then all of a sudden he's just dropping dimes everywhere all over the field, taking shots, taking hits, and takes an LSU offense that we go, they suck, they're pro style, they just run the football, they're boring, they're monotonous to, hey, let's spread it out, let's throw it all over the yard. And, and by the way, I think the coolest thing, Dan, was he did it with swag always. Yes, he always true. had that moxie and just like kind of that kind of, you know, you know what attitude that he would just kind of stick it to you. I would argue for Johnny Manziel because everybody recognized the SEC is the best conference. Johnny Manziel led the SEC in rushing and passing. So, yeah, I just, I, I think that with Johnny. Johnny was the most exciting, one of the most exciting players ever to watch. But you also didn't know what you were going to get from Johnny. Like, it was like Forrest Gump. His life's like a box of chocolates, bro. But, but, he, 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 but he ran for 1,400 yards and 20 touchdowns, David. Yeah. And that's, he could that's, win a Heisman I mean, off of that, and then you throw in his passing numbers. Well, I mean, are, are we going to, okay, if we're going to do that too, but passing numbers were okay. But what about Cam Newton then? If you're going to talk about running the football and setting the world on fire, that dude was a one-man band, jump on my back, I'll take you to a national championship. And that no, probably you're right. is you're right. more impressive. So. Okay. But but Johnny led the SEC in rushing. He also led the SEC in parties attended. That <laughs> dude lived his best life. <laughs> okay, you went to Georgia. Did you get cheated at Georgia? Did you party in no. Georgia? No, there's plenty of I, – I wasn't much of a – I was pretty boring, Dan. I just – I preferred video games and, and football, but – um, Georgia doesn't lose many parties either. There's plenty of opportunities <laughs> to go out. Hey, 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 and let's be honest, when you're a football player, more opportunities tend to present themselves to you. So absolutely. Yeah, I've been to Athens before. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, <laughs> okay, how does Georgia lose this game against uh, Oregon? I think it would be Bo Nix being really good scrambling around making plays because if you saw Bo Nix you know it's been a it's been a carnival ride let's to say the least it's been up and down and it's been all over the place with Bo Nix but he can extend plays with his feet and make magic happen so he would have to do that listen I get it I went to Georgia I understand Georgia won a national championship there's also 15 guys that got drafted that are gone yeah. 15 so let's spin the wheel and plug in that guy no I mean all-time great players that they're losing. So getting Georgia early is a good thing, is a good recipe. How about Dan Lanning? He was just there celebrating a national championship as a defensive coordinator. He knows Munkin, the offensive coordinator. He knows Kirby. He knows all these guys in the building, which, you know, try to use as much information as you can get. But Bo Nix would have to play sensation. Uh, David Pollack predicts Ohio State, Clemson, Utah, and Alabama will be in the uh, final four. Uh, before I let you go, the targeting rule – it, it, it concerns Sucks. me. It concerns me now because who's defenseless? Is a quarterback defenseless now? Uh, I, I, I Watching the game, I felt bad for these defensive backs. I, I don't know. They're turning their head away, so you're not coming close to leading with your crown. Like, where are we going with targeting here, David? It stinks, man. It, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rule that we complain about every single year. And, then, and by the way, now – also, you, you throw all that onto it. Now, I got to go get this guy who's super fast, 
get him on the ground, but he ducks his head and he lowers himself to get underneath me or away from me. And now I got to readjust on the fly when I'm already trying to catch this sucker that's way faster than me. Anyways, it's impossible to be a defensive player. I was hoping that we could finally, you know, do the, you know, we, you get one freebie, you know, one kind of not so bad targeting. You get to stay in the game. If it's malicious and you're dirty, kick them out. So be it like take care of the sport and stuff like that. But man, it's hard enough to play defense. Now you add in all these rules and forcible contact to the head or neck, leading with the crown of the head. Like, it sucks to be an official, but it, it sucks to be a defensive player, period, with, with all these rules. Bigger arms. You, Chris Fowler. I got, I got CF. Oh, you I do? I got CF for sure. Yeah. I mean, he might he might bench press a lot. He's You know, Dan, he's, he's, he's getting a little bit up there in age. Yeah. So, you know, as you get a little bit older, you, you start to lose a little muscle mass. But but he's still a, I mean, he's still doing a really good job. But I, I got I got CF right now. Okay. You, Kirk Herbstreet. Well, are we talking about muscle or circumference? <laughs> <laughs> no. Did you just call Herbie fat? No. That, that... He's, he's, he's – He's good. He's in good shape. He's, you know, he's, listen, <laughs> no, he's a no, fifty-something-year-old man. I mean, he, he's got the shape of a cantaloupe. I think is what you're saying. <laughs> I can't believe that you're calling out. You just called Herbie fat. Oh God, I could I could see those headlines. By the way, even that getting sent to Herbie and really really loving that. But no, I mean, hey, now now Desmond's Desmond's a war daddy. Like, but Kirk, Kirk is uh, Kirk is more of an incline walker. He's more of a you know, he's more of a walker. What? What the hell is going on with Desmond's picks? I got nothing for you, bro. <laughs> I mean, he's got he's got Baylor, Pitt, Texas A. Did he think this was basketball? And he's got Michigan uh, in there. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think uh, you know. Listen, you know, you know, you get all of our picks, Dan, and we we put our picks out there, and they're kind of boring. And I think sometimes you want to shake it up, but um, you know, he shook it up all right, and 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 he went with his picks. I, I don't know that. I don't know that he I, – I don't know. I'm not buying he might fully believe all those picks, but you know what? If, if any of them come to fruition, shoot, it'll be a heck of a call. Have fun there at, uh, in Columbus. Now, do you call them the Ohio State Buckeyes? Absolutely not. I know they're playing the <laughs> Notre Dame Fighting Irish, though. So. Thank you, David. All right, Dan. Appreciate it, brother. That's David Pollock, former Cincinnati Bengal. First-round pick. Went to uh, Georgia. 